We talked about what's going on as far as the world of sports is concerned. Phone calls, plenty of them to get to. Uh, let us start with uh, Ron in Michigan, and he says hello, and he's our Mad Dog Unleashed. Ronnie, good afternoon. Your turn. How are you today, pal? What's on your mind? Hey, dog, what they used to play? 154? Uh, up until 1961, yep. Yeah, why don't they just go back to that, start opening day on Monday, the day of the national championship, the first weekend, you know, you have the Masters, and then just give them a little bit of time off. I 100%, you know, I 100% agree. Uh, they're not going to do that because that's four dates uh, that each team would lose, four home dates, uh, because it's, you know, that's eight game dif- uh, uh, that's an eight-game differential, so each team would lose four home gates, and that's a lot of money, and, and you know, the owners don't want to do it. I, I think the owners would be receptive to it, but then the players yeah. have to, but then the players would take less money. So I think well, the owners would say, you know what, all right, well, for the good of the game, maybe we will decide to lose four, but we're going to make the players pick up half the cost, and then, you know, they're never going to reach an agreement. So it's all about money. You are right. That is what they should do. And if you wanted to extend the opening round miniseries to best of three, you could do the wild card. You could do that instead of the one game shootout. Uh, That's not a terrible idea. But because money's involved and common sense never works, they won't do it. But I'm not I, I don't think that's a terrible idea. I really don't. Go ahead. No, it just seems like it's the time to do it because the owners are seems like they're cut back on these terrible contracts. It just seems right now at the time it makes sense to do it. Yeah, 154 games. I mean, I would love to see him do it. Remember, they the 154 game schedule, folks, came in in 1961, the year of exp- some expansion. And it came in in 61, and that's when Maris hit the 61 homers. And that is why there's always been or was an asterisk next to Maris's name because Maris obviously did it in 162 games while Ruth broke hit 60 in 154 games. So at the time in 61, there was a lot of pressure on Maris. In game 154, he had 58 or 59 at the time. There was a lot of pressure on him to hit a home run or two in game 154 to match Ruth is 60 homers in the same amount of games in the same season, and he didn't do it. Matter of fact, Paul Richards, the Oriole manager, who was a tough son of a gun, uh, brought in a knuckleballer, Hoyt Wilhelm, to face Maris in the last at bat or two. I think Maris may have had 59 um, after 154. It may have been 58, but it was 58, and he, he brought in Wilhelm to make it impossible for Maris to hit a home run off a knuckleballer in his you know, last hit batter two trying to catch Ruth. But that's when they moved to 162, and I generally agree. Uh, that was um, something that baseball should do, but they won't. You, you know, nobody, lo- nobody lessens. In the NFL wants to go to 18 games. The NBA should go down, cut down to 70. I mean, 82 games is stupid, but they are never going to go less. They're always going to either stay the same or try to increase. So uh, I, it's not just baseball, all sports. Uh, they should uh, lessen the amount of games, not make them more. Here is uh, Tony in Dallas, and he's our Mad Dog Unleashed. Tony, good afternoon. It's your turn. How are you today? Chris, and everything that we like socially right now, if you just go back 15 or 20 years, uh, as consumers or as fans, we want less. We don't want long movies anymore. We don't want big cars anymore. We don't want, we don't want to watch live TV anymore. Everything in our lives, we've all adapted to it, whether or not you like the Internet or Twitter or something. But overall, we all like things that are shorter, that are quicker, and are more adherent to our schedule. But yet sports, and they always say it's for the fans. Oh, we're here for the fans. The players say, you know, if it wasn't for the fans, we wouldn't have a job. But the one thing where fans can unite and can agree upon whether or not they're NBA, like you said, uh, Major League Baseball, the NFL to some extent, we all want shorter schedules because we know that shorter schedules improves a product and it makes us want to watch the product. Yeah, no question and about go it. And see the, there's yeah. no question about it. Well, the so NBA, you, uh, well, in all the sports, the NBA should play 70 games and less, yeah. than the, and less than the amount of playoff teams. Baseball should play 154 games. Football should yeah. even go back to 14 games. Uh, they're not going to do that. Night. Uh, <laughs> and get rid of Thursday night. Excellent point. And look, they just sold Thursday night to Fox and made a fortune. All and, these, and uh, the, the NCAA should not put 68 teams in the tournament. They should make it less nope. i mean uh, in all the sports you're a thousand percent right but they're not going to do that you know the nba tony if you didn't see this they're considering and it's an asinine idea they're considering playing a 
one game shootout uh, in both conferences where seven would play eight and nine would play ten. And the and the winner of the seven eight game and the seventh seed would be the home home court would be the seventh seed, and the winner of the nine ten game would play the loser of the seven eight game, and they would play for a playoff spot. And the same thing in the NF and the and the Western Conference. The last yeah, thing we just... the last thing we need is a Milwaukee Detroit. One game Williams. shootout yeah, to see you play have... Charlotte for the last spot in the NBA yeah. Eastern Conference. Ab- Go ahead. Absolutely. And, you know, and, and the one last point, you were just talking about what should Baltimore do. So, again, here's where the fans suffer. Because basically what you're saying is, so the Baltimore Orioles management should decide we're either going to suck all year and completely destroy the fan base by not putting a good product out there, knowing Manny Machado is going to walk, or we should spend some money and look like we're at least trying to have some sort of a viable pitcher there every fifth day who you said is a very good number three, whether you pay him $60 million or not, because now this is what the, what the Major League Baseball is going to do. They saw Kansas City did it. They, say, they saw the Astros did it. So now Atlanta's doing it. So now they're going to see it. It's like, okay, let's just suck for years and try to redo the team. This well, the way. Orioles are not doing that, so you got to give the Orioles a little credit if you want to go trying to be competitive. Remember, the Orioles have a bad farm system. They could, you know, the tanking aspect, which plagues all sports, especially the NBA. Oh, it's terrible for the NBA. Um, you know, the NBA, I don't know how they solve that problem. They got a lot of bad teams, and there's only five or six transitional players, uh, you know, franchise kind of guys coming out of that draft. So uh, the more you lose, the better off you are. Uh, so, but, I mean, I, the Orioles opted for something else. They opted to try to be competitive in 2018. And if you want to compliment them for that, you certainly can. I don't have a problem with that. If you think, you know, a third starter, Alex Cobb, the race to 85, that's what the Twins won last year to make the postseason. And that's what the Orioles, I guess, are trying to do here. Johnny in Port Charlotte, Florida. Johnny, it's your turn. How are you today, pal? What's going on? Yes, sir. Hey, um, Doug, I want to tell you something. I learned something today, and I always do when I listen to you. That That Maris comment where he brought a knuckleballer in, I've been watching baby. I'm 71 years old. I didn't know that. That's a great bit of information. I'd I'd have to look how many at-bats it was. I can have Eddie look up a series in Baltimore in 1961. Last week of the season, and he did bring Wilhelm in. He may have only been for one at-bat, but he did bring Wilhelm in there late. Wow, that's a great bit of information. Information. And about this Cobb guy, he's I, I'm in Florida. I watch every one of his stats. He's an eight to twelve game winner. He's not worth sixty million. He's an okay pitcher. What is what are they doing? Sixty million? You've got to be kidding me. Well, maybe I mean, maybe maybe six million, not sixty million. Well, Come yeah, on. They, yeah, I, I get it. They gave him forty to the defer the other twenty. He's gonna get the sixty, but forty for the moment. Um yeah, I mean, listen, he won 12 games last year. He's a decent third starter is what he is. On a good team, he... Now, he wouldn't be a third starter on the Yankees because he's not, you know, he's not better than Sonny Gray and he's their third starter. So, uh, you know, would he be a third starter on the Red Sox? Eh, maybe. Rick Porcello? I mean, maybe. Would he be a third starter on Houston? No, he'd be the fourth starter. Uh, so he's a... Rotation guy. What do you have in that Maris so game? So Wilhelm struck out Maris to lead off the top of the ninth. So he did bring him in. He came in and relieved. Yeah, know? he pitched the full inning. Pitched the full inning, and he brought him in to pitch the Maris. Now, Maris, did he have a 58 or 59 home he runs? He had 58 in game 152 that year. So he had 58 leading into that doubleheader with uh, Baltimore. So they played a doubleheader that day? Yeah. And, now, and he had played two games in one day. He did not hit a home run in the first game? Or no. was this the first game? This was the second game. So why would he bring him in? He was two homers away. Why would he bring him in for the ninth inning? I don't understand that. He was two homers, not one homer. What's the point of bringing him in? He's only got one at bat. I mean, unless it was a one-run game. It was game. a three-one game. Yeah, maybe. Uh, I mean, I, I, interesting. I know people were annoyed by Richards bringing him in. So they played a doubleheader in games 153 and 154. Is that what you're telling me? And Maris hit 58 home runs at that point? Correct. September 19th was the uh, two games against uh, Baltimore, I, in Baltimore. I know he hit 61 the last day of this season. When did he hit 59 and 60? I have to check that out. I right, want you to try it. We continue here on Mad Dog Unleashed. Tracy Stallard was the homer he hit number 61 against. And remember, Stallard just passed away recently. Um, uh, you know, well, In fact, the Yankees actually were, I'm sorry, the Yankees won the second half of that doubleheader, so they did bring Wilhelm in just to, to prevent Maris from hitting. 
Oh, so that was the first game then? Second game. It was the second game. Yankees up 3-1, but they brought Wilhelm in anyway to pitch to Maris. Well, but, it was, but he was still two homers still away. Still two away. So, I mean, I, why would you do that? I mean, he's not going to get two at-bats. The game, you're in ninth inning. I, I don't quite get that. He hits a home run, big deal. It's 59. He still didn't do it in 60 games, If that, 154 games. So wh- why would you do that? If you want to prevent Maris from catching Ty and Ruth with 154, why would you bring him in in game 154 in the ninth inning? Wilhelm. I don't make any sense. Unless he had 59 homers or unless there was another game that was the uh, first game of a doubleheader. I mean, regardless, I mean, it sounds, you know, we all know what uh, Richards was trying to do. Not the proper thing. 18 in front of the hour. We continue here on Mando Gun Lee. 